And now for our third example of solving a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. We still have something that is in standard form. Still have a equals 1. We're back to having b being a positive number, but we still have, as in the last example, a negative for what c is. Uh, we've got that a is 1, b is 2, and c is negative 4. So here we go. Negative b is going to be negative 2, since b itself is positive 2. b squared will have under the square root 2 squared minus 4 times 1 for a times negative 4 for c all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Again, most of our concentration first being on what's under the square root. It's going to be 4 from the 2 squared, and then again, counting how many minus or negatives, just thinking of them as all negatives, there are two of them. So negative 4 times 1 times negative 4, that's positive 16. 4 plus 16 is 20. not do any simplifying of the fraction before we simplify the square root. And the largest perfect square to go into the 20 is 4. It'll go in there 5 times. We apply our product rule for radicals. The square root of 4 is 2. We can't do anything with the square root of 5. It's not a perfect square. The largest perfect square factor that goes into it is 1, so that's going to stay under the square root. Here's where what I did on the towards the end of the previous example comes in handy. Factor out a 2 from the numerator. 1 squared of 5, or just squared of 5, all over 2. That cancels, and we're just left with negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5. On my lab math, you can type in either negative 1 minus square root of 5, comma, negative 1 plus square root of 5, but I have found, at least for one of their textbooks, it does allow you to type in a plus or minus sign, so that you could type that all at once.